Hey, hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Ranjan, and this is Deep Learning Playlist, and this is second video. And I have covered what is neuron, how neuron works, what is deep learning in my this video. If you have not watched this video, just here's the link. Go and watch out. So in this video, we will talk about further aspects of deep learning. We will talk about history of deep learning applications and what are the libraries that we will use in this deep learning. So now it's about the history of the deep learning. I know no one likes the history. No, no one is in interested in knowing the history because history is a boring subject but still i will give you an overview so perceptron is not a new thing so i have already explained you what is perceptron so perceptron is like using a single neuron in our model so the example i have shown you this is the perceptron so in the 1950s perceptron was invented and since then you are seeing we are working on this but lot of modification done on the perceptron but in the earlier 1969 it got criticized because we don't have the enough amount of computational resources so that's why it got delayed and in 1974 the jeffrey hinton is known as the brain of the google so he introduced back propagation i have just explained to you what is back propagation so in 1998 they have developed a cnn which is convolution neural network for recognizing the handwritten digits and in 2006 they have developed a restricted boltzmann machine so it was meshed neural network each and every Every neuron was connected to each other so later in 2012 there was a google brain project which they have developed a model for cat classification whether the image is cat or not and they have deployed the model on the 16000 core cpu so it, it was a big innovation and in same year the AlexNet wins ImageNet so basically ImageNet is a competition large scale visual recognition challenge so in 2012 AlexNet wins that competition so AlexNet was the second CNN model and it was considered the most influential research in the computer vision or in the CNN it was a big innovation in that era during the last 10 years deep learning has seen a lot of improvements in the research here I will show you the graph growth of deep learning versus machine learning in the 1950s deep learning has shown a some growth but over the time it got decreased because there are no any computational resources available and after some time like if you will see last 10 years the graph got increased because in the last 10 years we have seen a lot of development in the terms of gpu and if you will see machine learning follows the same way earlier it got increased in 1950 and over the time it got decreased and even the machine learning in the last 10 years has received tremendous growth and this is the basic terms that we will come across in the deep learning first is the input that i have already covered you what is the Input. so input is the features or the data which we will pass to the deep learning model and weights it will basically add a weights to each and every input so it will used in the optimization of our model it will reduce the error because we cannot change the input we can change only weight we have already learn y equal to mx plus c in linear regression so in this deep learning m would behave like a weight in machine learning it was just a slope but in deep learning it would behave like a weight and this c would be like a bias so this is the bias and neuron it's a single unit or fundamental unit of neural network so it is just a perceptron and here we have activation function so activation function basically achieves non-linearization of the data set and it will normalize the data set i will explain to you in my next video how it does activation function of a node defines the output of that node so we have activation function here it here it will pass some here we will pass some input to the activation function and it will return some output and that output would be in range of minus one to one or zero to one it depends which activation function we are using we have many activation functions and we have error cost and loss function so it is basically a difference between actual value minus predictive value and feed forward propagation i have already explained you that processing the data in one direction in the forward direction to get the output and the back propagation is the modifying the weights by going in the reverse direction in the neural network and in deep learning or in the neural network we will generally see three types of network ann cnn and rnn so ann is the first neural network and it's a very broad term under this artificial neural network we will be seeing the cnn and the rnn so on the above level it would be ann and and on the below level it would be CNN and the RNN and ANN could be shallow and could be deep so shallow means it would be having a one layer on. and deep ANN would means 
it would have more than one layer generally we will work on the deep neural network because in the artificial neural network or in any neural network we will be using multiple layers and second is cnn so whenever we will see cnn it will be using for image and video processing and it is specially designed for computer vision and the cnn has been invented to process and receive the pixel data so we all knows that in image and in video we have the pixels image is divided into the some pixels so convolution neural network works on the pixels so convolution neural network works on the pixels and third we have rnn which is recurrent neural network i will explain you each and every time in my upcoming video i am giving you just basic of these terms so it is just a time series version of ann whenever we have time involved in the data that is time series so that data we called as time series so it is just a time series version of ann and most common rnn we will use as lstm and the gru lstm is a long short term memory and gru is the gated recurrent unit and we have the forecasting models weather forecasting talk forecasting and all language model nlp language translation natural language translation so in all the things we will use rn because in all the things we have a time series data this has a special technique by which rnn allow us to choose how past information we want to let flow through the next layer of the model that's how they called it as memory after these three types we have encoder decoder transformer and bert so these all are used in natural language processing and we have many libraries in the deep learning so most important is the tensor flow which you will see most of the time and it is developed by the google and it has static graphs this is just a drawback of this library i will explain you all i'm just giving you basic of all these libraries i will explain you all these libraries in my next video and keras is a google another library tensorflow has the problems has overcome in the keras and keras has a dynamic graph in the tensorflow there was static graphs and we have the library thiano which was very old and it was developed by the university of montreal and as of now they have they have stopped developing it further and pytorch developed by the facebook and they have used the torch framework in this library and cafe2 was also developed by the facebook and cntk it was developed by the microsoft for the nlp and this is chainer and chainer is developed by the preferred network it is a japanese startup and eighth we have the mxnet it was developed by the dmlc and now apache is taking care of mxnet and it has to adopted by aws and azure many cloud companies and this is sonet it was developed by the deep minds and the, this is onx model it is developed by the facebook and the microsoft and it's a, it is just a format for sharing the deep learning models suppose if you have developed the model in the tensor flow and you want to deploy in the keras so onyx model will work here it's a open format for sharing deep learning models across different frameworks so you can train one model in one framework and transfer in production in another framework and gluon is an api which has developed over the amazon mxnet and it was introduced to develop by the amazon and microsoft and the cafe2 and the pytorch facebook has uh, integrated these two things so facebook has developed another library which uh, he have using cafe2 and the pytorch and what are the applications of the deep learning we can use in the speech recognition audio recognition because this is time series data so deep learning has widely used in the speech and audio recognition and now we have computer vision prior to deep learning we had many techniques for recognizing the features from the images as we had computer vision but the results were not always great so now computer vision with deep learning is showing very good accuracy and performance for image classification and recognition task even facebook had used the deep learning in identifying faces in photographs and nlp nlp has many things like speech recognition we have already covered text recognition language translation from one language to another language and even in cyber security we have we are seeing many application like malware detection data breach social engineering attack phishing sql attack uh, ddos advanced persistent threats there are many many application in cyber security and even in the self driving cars deep learning is getting used in unmanned aerial networks and all other applications where machine learning was working if we are having a large data or we want to get we want to get a good accuracy so we use deep learning so that's all in this video i will cover neural network in my next video i will explain each and every terminology which we used in the deep learning so i hope this video is informative to you please like this video if you have learned something new today and do subscribe my channel if you have not subscribed do share this video with your friends and colleagues so see you all in the next video till then goodbye enjoy happy learning